G'day everyone, welcome to episode 14 of Let's Chat Community Rugby, where we talk about um, everything that's happening around the grounds, um, both in clubland and in high performance. Um, my name's Graham Cooper, I'm hosting today in Dane's absence, and with me I've got Cam Moore, who's stepping in to fill my big shoes. Welcome Beautiful. Cam. Beautiful, thank you, thank you for having me. No, no dramas. Um, I guess first up to the legion of fans out there, um, apologies for last week's non-episode. Um, Dane got struck with the flu and, and I was off gallivanting the, the island's refereeing. So we apologise for that, uh, but hopefully we can make, a, make up this for it. This will be two week. times as good, so yeah, exactly we'll right. make up for it. Exactly right. Um, we'll kick into it, mate. Uh, we'll look at uh, last week's results um, of uh, FMG Premier Grade and obviously the FMG community grade as well. So first up, mate, West Scarborough v Cottesloe. They um, did an absolute job on them. They were, they were fantastic hearing reports from the likes of uh, Benny Grant, you know, coming off the bench second half. They had a tactic in place, but West Scarborough way too strong. Filetti Kaito, I think, dumped, jumped over the line and got a little meat pie, so it's good to see Piggy's getting some points. That's it. Um, so West Scarborough beating um, Cot 34-27 there in a close one. But the West boys just a little too strong early. They've been good all year. I remember watching them play against the Arcs earlier in the year. They're so strong, really good at set piece. And they got a lot of uh, big back rollers who just carry over the line for them. So hard to stop. And I think they're almost a favourite for the end of the year. That's it. And Nedlands, the next one there, Nedlands Soaks. Um, I believe there was quite a few of the Force boys playing yeah, this one I as well. Yeah, I think there was three three boys that topped up and watching the highlights of Heath Tesman running around like he's 21 again, yeah. a whole 20 years ago. So... <laughs> You know, it's huge to see the old fella getting around and then, you know, young buck Tom Sheminant doing some great work, but just a lot of the club players as well, some, you know, some strong performances by their back row and, you know, some, some good control out the back as well. That's and it. Uh, it was good to see that the drone was up in the sky with Ali Henderson controlling that, so everyone doing their part at Rugby WA. <laughs> good, good. So Nedlands beating uh, Soaks there, 53-17, so... Um, the Soaks gonna the Soaks boys gonna have to back up this week and, and put a better performance on the field there. The next one um, in a close one, UWA fifteen defeating Wanneroo twelve. Yeah. Um, any news on that one, mate? Well, belt up match of the round it was, and uh, it was good to see some of the boys you know really shining and Deegan making his first tackle of the year, which was good. <laughs> But it was just, yeah, a real close game. One for the fans, you know, ex-Western Force player Leon Power doing his bit around the field for Wanneroo, holding some great set piece. But, uh, you know, it was good to see UWA with the loss of a few boys to injury. They still held in there and they, uh, you know, they controlled the game really well. That's it. I hear their, their back threes firing at the moment. The fantastic. The seven letting them down a little bit, you know, Carlo. But, uh, no, they've, uh, they've been fantastic. Back row doing really well. No, fantastic. And moving to Fortescue Championship Division, um, uh, we had Joondalup Brothers 47 defeating Curtin Uni 12 um, at HBF Park there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Joondalup boys <laughs> were due for a win, um, but I think the Curtin boys are now, with, with the comp split, uh, yeah. Are finding a little bit more consistency and a bit, bit more competitiveness well, in this. To be fair, I give it to the Curtin boys with a 40 minute game. It was the second half they would have won because yeah. uh, they held them scoreless in the second half. It's fantastic to see. Andrew Reddy, you know, moving to the back row at seven. Oh, Jesus. A couple turnovers, I hear, and a couple uh, couple tries as well. So oh, fantastic. Good. And the Curtin, they, they are getting stronger, and, you know, I think their, their first win's coming soon enough. Yeah, Hopefully, not in two weeks against the Arcs. But, <laughs> yeah. The next one, um, the guys from the South Coastal Cavs. Um, 42 defeating Perth Bays World of 31 there. Um, I think the Coastal Cavs boys um, was probably been a little bit unlucky with a couple of performances this year that they've that, that they've put out, but they're, they're pretty consistent on how they they attack and, and and how they use set piece. Anywhere and everywhere is their is their motto, and, <laughs> and they are dangerous when it's string and they string it together. And it's good to see, you know, uh, you know, the return of a few Force boys in the June up team. Maybe just had a little bit of extra confidence, but they've got the uh, they've got the the people there and the players are just stringing it together, and they can have a few big more, yeah, a few more big performances. That's it. And the Pally boys, who I think currently sit on that top spot in this division, um, just too strong for the the Southern Lions boys. They're forty six twenty six a yeah. success. Yeah, Pally, you know, this such a strong young team. They, they're they're building for something big over the next few years. Good to see them put a good performance in because they're always a struggle to play against. And not even the return of uh, Fergus Lee Warner for Southern Lions could help them. Yeah. But uh, well done to the Pally boys. 
Exactly right. Um, mate, the last one, I'll let you talk about this one. Um, the Caller Boys getting over the Arcs Boys 41-34. Tell us a, a bit about this one. You're well, Battle of the involved. Titans, to be fair. There are a lot of big boys running around down at Harrisdale on the weekend. You know, some plus 130 kilo men uh, <laughs> running at other 130 kilo men. But look, it, it could have gone one way right at the start where it was 19-0 after 15 minutes. Uh, but luckily, the Arcs boys, we stayed in there. There's a few big performances from you know, our back rowers and uh, young Jacob Cowley as well, doing well in the centres and, and just really lining it up and, and keeping us in the game. But Kalamunda too strong. Uh, Jeremy Thrush, you know, controlling their game really well and their set piece was, was much stronger than ours. So Fair that's enough. where they got it. Um, just on that note, um, the Caller boys took, it, took over the Rugby WA Cup. Uh, well, well, what's left of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they enjoyed the spoils in the change rooms after the game, apparently. With yeah, that. we only wanted it for one week, so we passed it on. Just so it was shared around Rugby WA. Yeah, nice. So friendly of you. Yeah, no, just trying to be nice. Look after our brothers. <laughs> uh, moving on to the ladder. So uh, the Premiership Division, um, we've got Netherlands um, on top of the log there. Um, which will be a, a, a tough battle for that one and two spot in, in the coming week. Um, Cottesloe on 58, West Scarborough 55, um, and then rounding up that is UWA, Soaks and Wanneroo. Um, obviously that fourth spot in that top top six is, is up for grabs. The UWA boys have a tough one against West Scarborough coming up this week. And then that battle of the Soaks Wanneroo um, this Huge. week as well to, to stay in the mix really. If, if one of those guys drop out, um, I think the, the top four is pretty sealed. Um, makes it pretty hot. I mean, Wanneroo, they can knock off some big teams. They can, you know, push UWA there. But I think uh, West Scarborough on the bounce being too strong. So that'll that'll make it tough for UWA on that fourth spot. Exactly right. Um, and in that championship division, uh, Pally on top there by by a couple of games, followed by your boys, Arks, um, Kalamunda, Joondalup, Southern Lions, Coastal Cavs, Perth Bayswater. And we just really want that Curtin Uni side to get... To get a point. Yep, just a bonus point to start <laughs> throwing that ball around. I think the message to the coach, get that ball out wide. Andrew Reddy in the channel, so let's see some points on the board. That's right. Um, well, we'll kick off with around the grounds. Um, plenty going on in community rugby and, and high performance the last couple of weeks. Um, the first one there I'll, I'll touch on. The under-18 state girls um, went over to the, to the national championships in Sydney Last weekend, um, a couple of close games. Unfortunately, um, the 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 results didn't go our way in, in a couple of the early games, um, but very close. Uh, we played Sydney Juniors first up, lost seven nil. Uh, Brisbane Juniors um, ten nil, and then we started getting a bit of a roll on, defeating the ACT team um, fourteen seven, and then. Um, I guess put a really good effort against the South Australian girls, um, winning 33-0 there, um, and then taking um, fifth, sixth spot um, off the ACT girls, winning 24-0 in that final game of that tournament. Um, very well done to to all girls and coaches um, and and management staff on getting the girls there. Um, very well done. Just a special mention to Dallas Tinney and Nicole Leddington, who made that merit team from that tournament. Well done, that's so. awesome. Uh, yeah, good to see there's a few uh, quite young girls in that under-18s team as well, so playing above their age, and it's fantastic to see uh, participation rates and, and girls really want to go take that next step. Exactly right. Um, a, another one from our high-performance side of things, the 18s boys travel this weekend to um, Melbourne and Albury to take on the Rebels and the Brumbies in, in two matches over there. So the Rebels we take on on, on Friday, um, which will be live streamed on rugby.com.au. And then that Brumbies game in Albury on Sunday will be live streamed as well. So jump on rugby.com.au to, to catch those guys and support the boys. It's huge and uh, all the best out of them. Yep. Um, lastly, high performance wise, the under 15s and 16s regionals uh, kicked off on Saturday um, with the North boys taking out both of those age groups in game one. Their game two is tonight at Curtin Uni. Um, first game kicking off at five o'clock, the 15s. Um, so if you've got nothing else to do on, on your holidays, guys, head down 
and, and see what um, that's all about. The, the quality of rugby is pretty good. Huge. So. I was lucky enough. I got to coach the under under 15s, oh sorry, under 16s last year, and the talent you know across you know north and south is fantastic. And it's good to see lots of boys putting their you know their best foot forward and, and doing really well. Exactly right. Um, this one's a big one for the Curtin Curtin Uni. Uh, Forget about Cameron club. Smith. <laughs> Forget about Benji Marshall. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> um, mate, 300 games. Darren Roddy Rodriguez. Well done, Roddy. Um, mate, 300 games in any sport is is massive, uh, but rugby, mate, it's it's outstanding. So congratulations, uh, Roddy, on your 300th game this weekend. Um, this is the weekend, then I feel. Do it for Roddy. Do it for point. Roddy. Do it for Roddy. <laughs> That's right. Um, just a couple of notes on him. He's the most capped GOAT this year, playing 23 games. So, captaining third grade um, and most probably running off the bench for second, second grade, grade most weekends as well. So, mate, outstanding by you. Um, and he kicked off that career in 1985 for the, wow, the Curtain Goats. Ten years before I was born, so fantastic, Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, mate, um, the next one's, I'm going to throw it over to you. Um, FMG Player of the Month last month was big Russell Burgess, big Rusty from Arx. Mate, give us a bit of a rundown on how he's been travelling. Huge. I mean, during the time I've been there, he's, he's been a, a great asset to the team. He's a really good leader. Uh, started the year off just a little bit slow with, you know, a couple of results going against us and maybe not giving confidence to the players. But then Russ really stepped up and, and led the way. And he's great around the park, really, really strong in defence. But then he's just, yeah, he leads by example, which is huge for the boys. So it's great to see an Arx player do it, but even better that uh, Russ got the uh, got the chocolates this month. Nice, nice. Uh, mate, on the Arx, um, obviously Arx Rugby Club uh, with Russ. Mate, you've been there for a couple of years. Give us a bit of a rundown on what it's like to be an Arc, Arc man. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just, well, if it, it's fantastic. You know, I love it. I'm so lucky to be part of a, a family club with, you know, some amazing volunteers, some, some really great people around the club from the juniors all the way up to seniors and some really great people involved who, who care a lot about the club and moving out of, you know, lower divisions in previous years and, and really stepping up into the Prem grade and getting some huge, huge victories. It shows it's a, it's a club going in the right direction. So heading down to Harrisdale, it's a uh, beautiful part of the world beautiful part of the world, bottom of the Swan Valley, so I love it, and uh, yeah, no, I can't wait to get back down there this weekend. Yeah, perfect. Mate, on that, um, we'll look at uh, this weekend's um, games. Uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with the, the Premier Division. Mate, I'll I'll sit out the first one, Wanneroo v Soaks. I'm, I'm blowing the whistle yeah, for this one. they've scraped the bottom of the barrel this week, unfortunately, Wanneroo Associates, but uh, look, I think Wanneroo, uh, you know, I think They've had a few unlucky results in the past few weeks, and associates haven't been, you know, stepping up to the mark. So uh, my money's on Wanneroo this week for them. That's it. No, fair enough, uh, mate. The next one, three v four on the ladder. Huge. Um, UWA West Scarborough. This will almost solidify a finals berth. So look, I think UWA being, you know, quite good in the weeks. They were, they were lucky to get through last week with a, uh, you know, close victory. But then it's hard to go past, you know, Dylan Parsons' beautiful West Scarborough team at the moment. They've been. Fantastic every week, and they've only been going from strength to strength. So I'm going to have to say West Scarborough. Mate, I agree. They, they, re, they. Uh, I guess beginning of the season form, bit of up and down. I think they've hit their straps yep. at the right at the right time. Those West. Hundred um, percent. Mate, the last one there, live streamed match of the round. I made big. 1v2, Cot v Nedlands down at Harvey Field. Massive Who game. Got? Massive game. Look, it's hard to go past uh, Cottesloe with you know the strengths they've had this year, but then Nedlands, you know, I, I, they've been quite strong. They, they want to have that minor premiership down pat. So I'm going to have to say Nedlands by a few points. There'll be a penalty in it. Jeez. Very, very close. Uh, fair enough. I think a couple of the, the force boys coming back into that Nettie's front row. Yep. Makes them tough to beat. Um, obviously, the the cot forward pack been quite dominant this year, but I don't think that'll be the case this weekend in that game. Um, mate, championship division. First one up there is Curtin v Southern Lions. Huge um, at Curtin Uni. Look, I've got an inkling this is Curtin's week. You know, the curtain hasn't been drawn yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a. You, you're you funnier know, than Dane yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocking. Uh, look. 
Roddy's 300th, isn't it? Exactly. You know, so this is it. This has to be the week. Southern Lions will be all right. I think they've got, you know, Fergus Lee Warner down there again. But I think, you know, Andrew Reddy's work over the ball and, and some of their, you know, strengths in the second half last week, if they carry it in, Kurt and Uni could do this one. Boom. I like that. Um, next one there, Calla v. Basie. I think Callard's just going to be too strong. If they turn up and they, and they use their big boys well, then they'll uh, be able to penetrate uh, Perth pretty well. Yeah, nice. Um, mate, this one's your game. Um, the drive down to Coastal Cavs, Oakmont Reserve, Mandra. A um, bit of a travel for the Arx boys. Yeah, got the camper van ready, so we'll get down there nice and early, spend the weekend <laughs> down the coast. Uh, look, it'll be it'll be a big game. If you want to see some running rugby, it's definitely the two teams for it. Exactly uh, right. They'll be attacking from everywhere. I know the Arx boys are you know, seeding after our seven seven point loss last week, so we'll be returning. And Coastal Cavs are on a bit of a high, so it'll be a, a good battle. Yeah, but nice. I'm going to have to say the Arx. Fair Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, and last one there, Joondalup v Pally. Look, I think Joondalup. Uh, are going to struggle a bit. They've had a good victory, but uh, Pally have been quite strong and very, very well, uh, well drilled. So I think yeah. they might do them there. Yeah, no, fair enough. So that's a wrap on the the, the week's tips. Um, thanks, mate, for those. Um, but I think Soaks want to have a, a pretty good ref this week. Thanks. For Hope that. so. Fingers um, crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toss of the coin, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, next up is um, our local hero of the week. Um, once again, trying to promote all our hardworking volunteers within Clubland. Um, and this week's is Mark Nicholas down at the Soaks Rugby Club. Uh, he used to be the junior president, um, long time committee member, I think, since I've been here. He's, he's worked on the committee down at Soaks and he's just taken over the manager of the Boneyards. So I was down the Grim there. Reaper, as they say. Well, true, <laughs> <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is good from you. You're, you're coming back. Oh, back. Um, Sorry, Dane. <laughs> so, mate, I was down there a couple of weekends ago and he was trudging around the field, sorting out goalpost padding and things like that during games. He was behind the bar. They're the heart and soul volunteers and it's good to see them hanging around and really giving back to the club. Exactly right. So, Mark, mate, congratulations. Once again, if you've got a Hero of the Week that you want to recognise on Let's Chat, Mate, send it in, and we'll be more than happy to give him a mention. So, uh, well done, Mark, and, and good job to all the other volunteers. Um, the next one is TMO Clip of the Week. Um, once again, we've had to scour the clips ourselves, so please send them in. This one we've got coming up is, once again, an ARX. Bit of an ARX Producing theme here the this goods. week. Um, Will Job. The wizard, um, the wizard, fantastic with ball in hand. We'll, we'll have a look at it. Here we go. So there's TMO Clip of the Week, mate. What do, Huge. What do you reckon? Ark's producing the good. Uh, the big, I think he was playing 10, the wizard, but he had 13 on his back, which was a loose head plus a tight <laughs> head together. So it's good to see him running the ball. But, you know, he ate Carlos Spencer and he produced the good. So yeah. it was yeah, fantastic move. But, you know, he's got more in him this weekend. Yeah. So I can't wait to see it. Well done, Will Joe. Yeah. Remember, send in your TMO Clip of the Week um, and we'll be more than happy to show it on Let's Chat. Mate, that's a wrap for episode 14 of Let's Chat Community Rugby. Um, once again, good luck to everyone playing club football this week. Premiership, championship, um, community grade, women's, uh, no juniors this week. They've got a bye. Um, Cam, mate, appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Um, I think Dane's lost his job. Yep, see you later, Dane. Um, so we packed your things up upstairs. <laughs> that's a wrap. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>